Paul Nash is my name. I'm from Cove originally. My dad was at sea, I uh, was captain at sea many, many moons ago. Uh, my grandfather would have been a pilot in Cork Harbour. My brother's a pilot in Cork Harbour. So I'd have a lot of maritime history. In fact, I think we'd go back about seven or eight generations in Cove. Obviously, welcome on board the Grace O'Malley, Ireland's new sail training vessel. The idea of this vessel is that she'll kind of replace the Asgard, uh, which would have been the Irish sail training vessel that tragically sunk about 12 years ago off the coast of France. I suppose we've been waiting a long time really to get a sail training vessel back. Uh, it's privately funded at the moment, but the agreement, I believe, is that the Irish government and the Northern Irish government are in agreement that this will be the sail training vessel for the island of Ireland. Obviously, we're all excited about that. I teach in the Maritime College in Cork, and so I come up here and just do a bit of voluntary work uh, as the engineer on here at the moment, and some of my students come on here as well, and that's really where I see this as being you know, a real asset to the country. What used to happen with the Asgard was that cadets would go away for maybe seven days, 20 young people who've never met before and one of, the, one of the requirements was that they they couldn't come on board with their friends they always came on their own and they joined a team of watch keepers and, and they did things like working out on deck going off the square rig setting the sails navigating the vessel helping out in the galley peeling potatoes everything all that team building stuff that went on every year there'll be trainees coming on here. Uh, I envisage about 30 on here, although they're talking about larger numbers. So in terms of the vessel itself, um, she's called the Lady Ellen. She was bought in Sweden and she's going to be called the Grace O'Malley, her new name, when she comes under the Irish flag. She's not under the Irish flag yet. She's under the Swedish flag uh, for this year. There won't be any trainee going on this year. This is a promotional summer where she's going to go around Ireland. The next place after Belfast, we're in Belfast for the next nine, ten days. That's going to Warren Point, Dublin, and then Cork. And then she's going down to the Mediterranean for probably the winter, or at least part of the winter time. So there's a good opportunity for people to come on board and have a look uh, in Dublin, in Belfast right now, um, and then Dublin next week, and then Cork the following week. A schooner, okay, and a schooner basically is all about the design of the uh, rigging, okay? So what you see on the forward mast here is a square rig, and what a square rig means is that the, the trainees or, or the crew will go up and they'll actually drop down those square rigs and she catches the wind from behind and she becomes a fantastic downwind vessel. So I suppose for those sailors that you might have listening to you, putting up the spinnaker would be the equivalent of a new vessel. So these are how sailing vessels would have manoeuvred around the world hundreds of years ago and still a very, very good design of, of vessels. So a schooner is, is designed, for example, the, the Asgar would have been a brigantine, which is just a smaller version of this. She's a steel vessel and the Asgard was made of wood and hence possibly why she sunk. A whole different level. She's lovely finished off in teak and kept all the old tall ship style and you'll see that as you as you walk around. You'll have full commercial requirements so the guys, the captain on here, the chief engineer on here will all be properly certified with the Department of Transport. Minimum crewing of eight so that would probably be captain, chief engineer, uh, first officer, first mate as they're sometimes called, second mate. And you'll have a bosun which is a really important person on a vessel like this because she's a sailing vessel so you need a experienced and you know person who, who has worked on tall ships before and then you'll have a couple of ABs and then really where the help comes in is when the trainees come on board. I would love to see maybe disadvantaged kids coming on here and get an opportunity to come and work together sailing and it might inspire them to turn a different corner in, in their life. You know once you're out on this boat and the engines are switched off and you're cutting through the water there's no better feeling. You go on the bow spread there you know you'll have guys sitting out there and the waves coming along the boat and it's just a magical experience. You don't know what it is until you actually get out and do it. I'm engineering myself so I suppose I kind of went when down a different route if you like but, but I still have a huge passion particularly for sailing and I, a few years back when I lived down in the West Indies and I used to do a lot of sailing in between teaching which is what I'm doing right now in the Maritime College in Cork so I'm, I suppose I'm involved in, in, in the maritime industry having gone to sea myself worked on passenger ships as well came back from working at sea in my kind of late 20s and then started surveying ships for a few years and then teaching I like the contact with the maritime industry and, and I think working with young people keeps you young as well and I, and I really enjoy that we're at a real uh, crossroads at the moment with the maritime industry in terms of training. I think it's very difficult to attract young people to go and work on ships. And I'm, what I mean by ships, I mean this, but also commercial ships. Because, you know, you're away, traditionally you will be away half the year. And I think that doesn't appeal to most people now, particularly the younger generation, where it's all about social media, it's all about instant information. And when you're, when you're away for six months a year, it might be a block of six months, but when you're away for any extended period of time, 
you feel you're out of contact with so much that's going on at home and it, it can be quite a lonely job as well and I think that's probably where the, the attraction to, to get people into this industry is, is difficult but somebody who really wants to go to sea will always come through anyway and I think our numbers haven't necessarily gone up over the last 10 years but they haven't drastically gone down either there's still a you know if you if i look at the maritime college in cork we would approximately facilitate about 40 deck cadets come in every year about 35 engineering cadets and anything up to about 20 electrical officers so 100 start every september and they go through a, a traditional program of bachelor's either science degree or engineering degree and then they work on ships of which this would be one if they wanted to. The sailing vessels tend to be someone who really is interested in sailing, whereas a lot of our guys would end up working on cruise ships, um, on oil tankers, on container ships, and super yachts. Of course, super yachts is a new industry that wasn't there maybe 20 odd years ago, and some of our guys now would end up working as engineers or captains on billionaire super yachts, which would be another level up from, from this.